Hi there Booktube, it's Roz and I'm here with a scally dandling video for you. I've got a couple of scally dandles lined up. One is a classic um, because it's, it's to Kazakhstan and that's coming soon. But this one is about a book from Wales and it's um, One Moonlit Night by Caradoc Pritchard which was written in 1961, in, published in Welsh, and was only fully translated into English in 1995 by Philip Mitchell. Now, now you might say, Ros, hang on a minute, I thought that scally dangling videos were about um, books from countries, by writers from countries other than your own, and isn't Wales basically, you know, part of England? Uh, no, it isn't. And, um, uh, I often start these videos with a little bit of a sort of geography and history sort of digression and I will do that here to um, to make this clear. Now I know that it, it, there's a tendency sometimes to use um, England, Great Britain, the UK, you know, almost interchangeably when of course in fact they're very different things. Now let's start with the British Isles, okay. British Isles are like an archipelago of islands that are off the, the the western the west side of the west coast of mainland Europe, and they, there's two, there's, there's two there's two big islands, and that would be Britain and, and Ireland, and then lots of smaller ones, including you know from like the Shetlands in the far north down to the Scilly Isles, down in the in the well to the south in the in the southwest. So so that's the sort of geographical British Isles. Then you have the United Kingdom, which is the um, is a political entity, not not a geographical one, and that's made up of England, Scotland, Wales, and Northern Ireland. And um, the 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 island of Britain, okay, has England, Scotland, and Wales, and Wales is the is the sort of lump that sticks out to the to to in the middle of it to to the west. Okay, so. That's sort of distinguishing, I suppose, where Wales is. But surely, you know, it's essentially part of part of one country. Well, yes and no. Northern Ireland and Scotland and Wales all are all what you might call sort of semi-autonomous um, uh, countries within a country, um, and that's a, a an accident of history, I guess, because. Um, Oh, if you think about um, the um, history, history of the British Isles, and if you think about um, the history of, of the island of Britain, um, the Romans, you know, well, you had kind of Neol the uh, Neolithic and Iron Age inhabitants there, you know, that we might, we, we could loosely call um, Britons, uh, different people in Ireland and in Scotland, but, you know, Britons over sort of England and Wales. Romans come, they sort of dominate, they they do um, take control of chunks of Wales because one of their main interests in the island of Britain was actually the um, uh, mineral um, deposits in Wales, you know, this lead and tin that they wanted. The When the Romans left, we had waves of Germanic invaders that, that established what basically became the what, what we call the Anglo-Saxons, and they they established England, but the Anglo-Saxons never actually took control of what of, of, of Wales. Um, it's a very mountainous area, and and you know that remained British rather than Anglo-Saxon, if that makes sense. And then you know when they, when the Normans came, you know ten sixty six and all that. They never managed. They didn't. They didn't conquer Wales either. You know Wales carried on being being. British or, or, or Welsh, as we would say now. And it was only in the very end of the 13th century that an English king, Edward I, succeeded in, in conquering Wales. And, and even then, it was kind of considered a separate country, you know, like that one king, but two countries. And, and it wasn't until the mid-16th century that, that Wales really became sort of joined up with England. So, so you can see there's a really long... Um, separate tradition 
um, in, in the, of, 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 of Wales as a, as a country or a, a principality. Now, a key element in that, I guess, is, is, is the language, Welsh or um, Cymraeg, I think is, is, is what you'd call it if you were Welsh, which was, um, a, you know, a British language, the original People spoke things before, but you know, so the language of 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 England as well, um, kind of got pushed over and was only sort of remained in 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 the far west, and and Wales was where it survived and evolved to to be sort of modern day Welsh. So it, it and and it's it's still spoken um, by about well around somewhere between a quarter and a third of people living in Wales now um, would say that they can they can speak Welsh but you know they're virtual bilingual but if you if you look back you know until um, you know sometime in the 19th century an awful lot of Wales was 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 you know truly Welsh you know Welsh speaking as in Welsh was absolutely was their only language or or their first language even if they had some English as well so you know it's it's by no means a dying language it's a living language and and was you know the language of Wales for till till and uh, yeah you know it's it's not um you know it, it was a majority language until 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 that was eroded in the 19th century but it, well into the 20th century you know an author like Cardinal Pritchard could grow up in um, an area where that was Welsh speaking and there are still, still very thoroughly Welsh speaking areas of Wales. So for me to read a book that's been translated from Welsh is, you know, um, reading something that's different from my own culture. And Wales has the most amazing literary tradition. I mean, in fact, it claims to have one of the the longest kind of continuous literary traditions in 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 Europe because it goes back to the the fifth century. Um, and lots of poetry in there, but also um, prose. The Mab Mabinogion um, stories are perhaps the the best known sort of early Welsh um, prose stories. Um, I've read lots of Welsh authors and I've read a trans translated translations of the, the Mabinogion, but I've never read a, 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 a modern Welsh novel. So this year's Dewey-thon, I thought I'm probably well going to do that. And I picked Caradog Pritchard's One Moonlit Night because it's considered sort of probably the best 20th century Welsh novel. Now, what's it like? What's it like as a book? Well, I actually absolutely loved this novel um, and that's why I was re really keen to make a video just dedicated to it. It's, um, I would say, it's not a novel that everyone is going to love, okay. Um, it has unusual and challenging elements but also extraordinary lyrical beauty as far as I was concerned as far as I'm concerned I should say that it's Pritchard's only novel he wrote poetry in Welsh um, he also wrote short stories in Welsh and uh, a memoir of sorts so but you know this was his one one novel and um, I think if it was written published now we might describe it as autofiction I mean uh, Pritchard was born in 1904 in um, uh, a place in North Wales called Bethesda. It, it's technically a small town, but to most of us, it, it, it's, it, you know, we'd see it as a village. And the book is set in a village that is not named, but it, it, it appears to be Bethesda. It's, um, it, it's similar in that it's, it's sort of on the edge of Snowdonia. It relies on a slate quarry for most of for most of the work for people in 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 the village um it's welsh speaking and the main character of the book is a boy who's kind of would be pritchard's contemporary um now this means this book has a a a first person narrator or most of it is in first person that's a child. Now that is often something that I find 
tricky or, or, or doesn't always work particularly well for me. I, you know, I'm not a fan, basically, of child narrators. Yeah, let's put it out there. This book, I absolutely did not find it a problem. I think part of that is because it's, it, it's kind of like there's an older version of the boy in the book who is looking back and this these are his memories it's it's like a sort of episodic series of 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 his memories except that he completely um relives them and embeds them so he's he's speaking as his younger self and you you hear the thoughts the feelings and the words of his younger self in the book but there's there's um uh a feeling for me throughout that there's a sort of older version that is 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 recalling this now like Pritchard um, the main character is very very close to his mother he his father died when he was a baby that happened to Pritchard as well and um, he he's living in extreme poverty um, his his mother is sort of struggling to um, survive on on a kind of like a, it's kind of like what we now call state benefits you know the, on a little little bit of money each week from the council and that has a sort of over time a very damaging impact on her mental well-being and her mental health and that was also true of Pritchard's mother so all of this kind of you know is very much drawing on his experience and like Pritchard I think you know this is a, a very bright little boy with um, a lot of ideas and ambitions that go beyond wanting to have to go as a you know 13 year old to go and work in the slate quarry. Now Pritchard um, manages to manages to leave and becomes a journalist um, in 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 Wales and then in London in Fleet Street you know works for the Daily Telegraph you know that that's um, his life and um, uh, but that's not it seems the future for the boy in in the book now the the story is very it's very well the events in the book put it that way the events in the book are very dark quite tragic um but there's something about it being told through the eyes of the child a child that means this it's a very sort of matter of fact description of violence and mental ill health and sickness and death and tragedy you know but it, it it's it's not um melodramatic it's in a way not that poignant it's not it it it's it, it's a very unromanticized story i suppose where these things just happen and you know the child just sort of gets on with it i mean he is he, he has some very distressing experiences and you know he's one of his he has two very close friends and one of them you know dies very suddenly and another one is kind of moves away and he never has contact with him again there's very very sort of tragic events but but it's also a very funny book um, there's a, a village football match that is um, a brilliantly comic scene and the characters in the book are just a joy you know they're kind of um, vivid eccentric um, but very real um, characters none of them have kind of regular names I mean there's a Welsh tradition of calling people by their occupation or their father's occupation or where they live and you know so we get you know I don't know Hugh Mil Milk Cart or um, uh, I don't know, Will Starch Collar, they have great names. The writing is quite lyrical at times. Um, there's odd moments when um, we leave the, 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 the boy's head, as it were, and his sort of consciousness, and get little interludes of where well, it's almost like the landscape or, or mythical figures in the landscape that, that, that speak to us. And those are lovely moments in the book. It's... The, the there is a plot of sorts but it's kind of episodic you know we're kind of moving through his boyhood and then you get the ending and i know from reviews that i've read that for some people the ending is a is a real problem about the book um there's like I, i'm avoiding spoilers here but there's a kind of a an additional dark twist at the end of the book that some people i think are taken aback by and 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 don't like 
what I would say is that I feel that for Pritchard, it's almost like he's thinking, like in his head, it's like, well, what might have been, you know, like I, I, I escaped the extreme poverty and um, deprivation and difficulty of my childhood. But what if things had tipped the other way for me? They could have done. And that's what he writes in to the book, in a sense. So this is a 100% wholehearted Ros recommendation, this book. Um, if, and I think you will know, having me having sort of described it here, whether it's a book that's going to appeal to you as well. And um, I really hope that more people read it. And if you're tempted to take part in 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 Dewey-thon and read it for that that's in March every year so um why not